Detective Griffin? You good? You all right? Pleased to be back. Your baby has been loved by me very much. I'd like to say thank you. So you're a policewoman? I'm a detective. That's hilarious. I like you. We have a report from Bondi Beach. There's a suitcase washed up. There's black human hair coming from the inside. You're with me. Oh, darling. You want to tell me what you saw? What is it about your cinnamon, mate? Come on, tell us. Cinnamon worked at Silk 41, a uh, brothel. My dad and my mum want to meet you. The destiny of man is, is to love a woman. No, the destiny of man is to enslave women. Mary's boyfriend is the German from Silk 41. everybody out there on the interwebs and in here. We have three lovely ladies from Top of the Lake China Girl. We have Alice, Gwendolyn, and Elizabeth. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you for having We're us. So, I, I mean, Hello. this show, guys, is incredible. Has everybody seen the first season of Top of the Lake? Yes. Hey. <laughs> um, one of my favorite shows of all time, and this one is equally on par. So congratulations. Thank you very much. To all of you for being a part of it. Um, Elizabeth, what was it like to jump back into the character of Robin in this iteration? Um, it was exciting. You don't often get to go back to a character like that, especially after four years. Um, and she's probably the most uh, different from me in a lot of ways. So uh, that's why I wanted to play her again because it's such a challenge for me and that's really exciting. Uh, it was great. It's like, it's, it's a gift when that happens, you know? You never expect that to happen. So I loved it. It was great. And Gwendolyn, how did you get involved in the uh, China Girl? Because this is a cool role for you. So different than what we're used to seeing you. It is. It, I watched the first series of Top of the Lake and I adored it and I, you know, it's no secret I've been a huge fan of Jane since I was 12 years old. So uh, the fact that she was doing television was very exciting to me because Jane's always very modern. And that first series I just thought was doing something really dynamic and new. We were seeing the world through a different set of eyes, the world in a different way. I thought Lizzie's performance was, was heartbreakingly brilliant and raw and and I really, really wanted to be a part of that project. I didn't know that there would be another project, yeah. but when that happened, I mean, it was a real, it was a real dream come true. Yeah. And Jane wrote the role for her, so that's what she's not saying. <laughs> very, very lucky. When Jane writes a role for you, that's when you know you've made it. Would you call her up and say, I, I want to be a part of this, write a role for me? I, I was her um, slave. <laughs> I was her slave for two years in her house. And I did her laundry and, <laughs> and pedicures. Perfect. That's all it takes. <laughs> now, Alice, uh, you might be your uh, mother's slave in a different way. You are actually Jane's. <laughs> I came out of her body. Yes. I did. That's how I, that's where this began. <laughs> in the womb. So, um, yeah. Yeah, for those who don't know, Alice is Jane Campion's daughter, and she, you are so phenomenal in this. Uh, so congratulations. You are Thank you. so good. Nice. All three of you are amazing. Um, so what was it like for you to be a part of a project that your mother wrote and created? Oh, it was, it was really fantastic. I mean, I, I'm actually, I'm a daughter, but I, I'm also a fan, you know. Um, I sobbed open-mouthed in the street in Sundance after watching the screening of the first installment and I, I think it's really wonderful when you get to weep in the street for something <laughs> like you know it's that's what I want in my life you know so to be a part of it it's like yeah it's crazy good and, and these girls are amazing yeah uh, what I love about this show is that it's about women saving women and we don't really see a lot of female 
um, detectives. Uh, we've gotten a lot more with the fall and the bridge. And, um, but what is it about playing a female detective in a show like this that was so important and powerful for you? I mean, there are female detectives, so <laughs> it was just representing accurately what is uh, what is the truth and what is actually out there. Um, uh, you know, in, in fact, my uh, our consultant with the Sydney Police uh, is this incredible woman, Chrissy, um, who is sort of the 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 best, better version of Robin. <laughs> She's stable and sane and, you know, doesn't drink as much. Um, <laughs> so that's the reality. The, there are women in the police force. Um, so it's important that we, that we show that in, on, our, on our screens, you know? Yeah. And what kind of research did you do? Uh, did you spend a lot of time um, with a certain detective, or did you? How did you kind of get into the mindset of playing Robin and being in this world? With uh, I spent a lot of time with Chrissy. Actually, we both did, um, and some of it was just kind of picking her brain a little bit. I would just get on the phone with her and talk to her about her life, and she was incredibly uh, open and generous with her experiences, and even the tougher parts, you know, about what she's seen and what she's had to deal with. Um, and uh, she's a very brave woman. So I just sort of picked her brain and tried to kind of get in... Uh, get as much as I could out of her. And then she also helped us with basic procedural stuff, like how to hold things right. <laughs> but it was an amazing insight into the police force, and not one I would have had without that experience of what it is for a human being to do that job, how you have to compartmentalise, and how, after a time, you're able to do that with ease. And the strangeness of that, how strangeness just becomes daily behaviour. It's your method of coping. And so bringing that level of, of mundanity, actually, into a very exciting, high-stakes story was, I found, fascinating. Yeah. That's what I love so much about the show, is that it is a crime thriller and it follows the case, but you also get to know a little bit about every single one of you individually in your own lives as characters. Is that something that's important um, as an actress to be a part of a show that you know, gives that depth to your character? Yeah, I mean, this is not a really, this is not a procedural show. It's, it's you know, we used to joke in, uh, the, in New Zealand on the first one that we were not making, you know, CSI NZ. You know, it was, it was, <laughs> because we don't know how to do that. Like, that's its own thing and it's great, but that's not our show. Uh, we're maybe not smart enough. It's much more about the emotional landscape of these characters and their, and the interactions and how they connect. And that it's, that's really what it is. And that's kind of what's most important to us. Yeah. And for me as well, when watching it as a series, it, e it exists in its own right. It is its own world. Uh, in my opinion, it, it plays with form and challenges our convention of form in television. It, it, in my opinion, it, it challenges the conventions of, of every moment of television. And it, and it, it really is its own entity. It is a, it is a piece of art. And Alice, what about you with your character? How did you, you know, get in the mindset of playing Mary? And it's a very complex kind of world she's involved in. Um, so how did you kind of get into it and live in that character? Um, well, actually, one of the sort of funnier things that um, I did to prepare for actually the relationship that Mary has with her father, Pike, um, is that um, myself and you and Leslie, who, who plays Pike, we would text each other as the characters and the, what we would do is basically he would set up something for us to do and I would say, all right, and then eventually I would cancel. <laughs> and that was just our routine as what we would do is Mary, you know, Pike would reach out and try and create a dinner date and um, eventually I would cancel on him throughout the rehearsal process because, um, you know, that, that was the, what we were trying to create, <laughs> you know, as the characters. Um, and we still got our messages are still saved as um, baby and daddy Pike in my phone. Um, but look, I, I really did a lot. I actually, I mean, I, I, I wrote, um, you know, a, a Mary diary and... What not? And I listened to, um, oh God, what is it? You were always on my mind. <laughs> the original and the Pet Shop Boys version a lot because that for me was actually kind of Mary's like theme for her um, love of her birth mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like that was her dream of like hoping that she was always on her mind. Yeah. 
hey, you have to get into character some way. And especially when you're, um, you know, you're playing opposite Nicole Kidman, um, who is another phenomenal part of the show. Um, what was that like for you to, you know, you talked about working with um, your father on screen, but what was it like having Nicole Kidman as that mother figure and getting, you know, you guys aren't really um, kind to one another in the show. Um, I think that Mary, um, Mary's relationships with both her partner or her boyfriend in the show and with her mothers are hugely um, conflicted but also quite romantic in the sense that they're huge, they are life-changing and um, I think in a way it did. It felt like a love triangle or it felt like when she was not spending time with her boyfriend, it, it felt like, I think, almost like she was cheating um, <laughs> on him because, you know, Robin does does seem to have the on, only kind of she seems to have the ability to like sway sway her position, and I think Puss feels that and responds in some pretty weird behavior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that like for you to create the dynamic between your two characters and this bond where it is a uh, mother and daughter, but you haven't seen each other, you haven't, but you have this automatic connection on screen. Yeah, um, you know, it was that was the thing that was sort of one of the most interesting things for me about the scripts or even the idea of doing this, again, was the idea that she would meet her daughter and what would that be like? How do you meet somebody who you have this connection with undeniably, but you don't know them and they're a stranger and what is that relationship? And the idea that she has to, Robin has to figure out how, she, how is she going to be a parent to Mary um, in a different way than, than her adoptive parents are? Uh, what can she provide to her as a, as a parent? And I I think that, that was really interesting to me to figure out. Um, as far as Alice and I, I mean, we we known each other for a few years. I met her I met her when we were in New Zealand. Um, and it was actually funny, and I've told Alice this. I remember when she showed up on set one day, I met her and I I went, Oh, oh, that's that's kind of where Robin came from. Like she sounds she sounded like Robin, the accent was like Robin. <laughs> like I was like, Oh, I get it, like that's what's happening. Uh, so the fact that she ended up playing my daughter made you know, apps obviously made so much sense to me. Um, and uh, we had a lot of fun. It was really interesting trying to figure all that stuff out and trying to navigate it. But the helpful thing is that the characters are trying to navigate it as well. So you don't have to really know exactly what you're doing because they have no yeah, idea totally. what you're doing. Exactly. You know? And what and about um, Gwendolyn's character, Miranda, and your character have this kind of buddy cop comedy within this really deep, dark drama? Um, how did you guys kind of form that friendship uh, on set. Well, how many episodes have you seen? A lot of them. <laughs> I don't want to, it's so hard for me not to spoil it. I, I'm like, what do audiences know and what don't they know? <laughs> um, I think we both really embrace the opportunity to play a female relationship that is not shown that often on screen. Um, you know, that they, they, they're not best friends and they're not enemies. It's much more complicated than that. And they have a really beautiful arc as well that is very much based in reality. And, you know, in the first one, I was so surrounded by men. It was all men everywhere and woods. And, <laughs> and, uh, and this time I had all these women to play with. And so for me, the opportunity to play with Gwen Oh, it was just, it was really such a gift. I don't know how I would have done this, this one without her, honestly. Um, it was just, it was so fun. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> it was, I mean, we were just hugely lucky in that it was one of those situations whereby from the first time we met each other, something just happened in the room. And there was a, a very natural exchange that happened. And I immediately, you know, I've long been a fan of Lizzie's work and a great admirer and, and sense that she would have a great work ethic. But there's a whole world of playful humanity there that makes uh, it easy to step into another realm. And, and when you feel safe and when you feel protected and you can trust the other person, then you really feel the ability to, to go to lots of different places and to try out different things. And there was never a moment where... It was, it was as it should be, it was wonderfully unsaid of where we might choose to go in the scene and then the scene would be over and then we'd be back to the relationship that we had. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it was natural, but I think it was feeling so secure mm -hmm. and trusted in the working relationship that you had the ability to really experiment. Yeah. You could go anywhere at any time. I often, I've, I've actually thought of Gwen as a sort of, 
acting with her is like acting with live ammo. You know, it's kind I of. I thought you were going to say live animals. Oh, live animals. <laughs> That too. <laughs> but you have to be present. She demands of you that you are present 100% of the time. You have to be there. You have to be right there with her. And she asks that you elevate your performance, you know, to match that. So you're only as good as the actors you work with. And uh, I got really lucky on this one with, with, with both of these ladies. <laughs> Aww. 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 <laughs> so the story, as you guys saw in the trailer, um, you know, the suitcase rolls up on the shore... And it opens up this whole crime where everybody's sort of interconnected. So you mentioned being present um, with your counterparts. How are you present in the storyline? How do you, you know, take on such a deep uh, thriller and without it kind of affecting your life outside of the show? Um, for me, I, I, I just didn't have time for that, you know. I, <laughs> I had a job to do. <laughs> You know, I mean, you're shooting a lot. You've got a lot of scenes to do, and you're going from one place to the next. And uh, I, I am not like this. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was like this. I'm not like this. We're shooting six episodes at the same time. You know what I mean? So you're doing it all at once. It's all out of order, all six hours. So you know, I just you don't. I don't really have that kind of a bandwidth to 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 get too deep into it. Cry. <laughs> And text me. <laughs> I'm <Run>. crying again. <laughs> I would go home and curl up in bed in a ball and be like, oh my God, this was deep. Are you crying? No. <laughs> I'm crying again. Okay, Gwen. <laughs> what about you, Alice? Would you go home and cry? Or were, I'm crying a bit. Off? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you could tell from my silence there's a bit of crying, but no, I, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, I don't want anyone to know I cried. <laughs> Um, but this show touches so much on so many women's issues. We have misogyny in the workplace, which is mentioned in the first episode. We have surrogacy, prostitution, um, just women being champions for other women. Um, how important was that for you to be a part of a show that has so much dialogue around issues that are being discussed today all over the world? I mean, you know, like I said before, it's so present, I think, in our in our lives as women. Um, and, you know, we're very fortunate, obviously, uh, in our position. So we're, we're aware that it's very, very, very present in, in other women's lives. So I think that anything that's reflecting what's currently going on and is giving that back to the audience so they can have some sort of connection about that um, and seeing themselves on the screen and seeing their stories on the screen is always, I think, important it's, to me. It's really, it's really actually vital to me, simply because from an extremely early age, having always been a, a film fan ever since I can remember, actually, um, I remember thinking, pro probably around the age of seven or eight, this is boring. I... I want to be an actress, but these parts are so often boring. Why is the woman just the girlfriend? Why is she just the mother? Why does she have minimal dialogue? Why is the emphasis on her body? Why does she have to have so few clothes on? And I think it's no secret that, of course, the world has been formed from a patriarchal society. Whilst that is how it's existed, I would like to see something else. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that it isn't just about women. I think this is about men, this is about human beings. We want to see new stories. And it's only, in my opinion, through seeing the differences that we can see the similarities in each other. What I Please said, yeah, that yeah. deserves a round of applause. Yes. Sisters. Boom, knockout. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Alice, no, I know you. I, I, what I love about Top of the Lake is I, I think that it's a show um, that doesn't just sort of show what we would like to be or how or it, it's not so much an escape it sort of shows us not just how we'd like to be but actually as we are mm -hmm. and that for me is like infinitely interesting and more powerful than any you know fantasy yes. well it's such a i mean just i won't be long just <laughs> it. it's a Take difficult it it's a difficult space isn't it and that's what Jane does so well, and why I've always loved her work, is that she's unafraid of what is difficult. It doesn't have to be appealing. And that's for men and women. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a human issue. And that's, that, to me, is an exciting place for art to exist. Yep, totally agree. Um, and Elizabeth, you've had quite a year, a banner year, I have to say. I saw you in Chuck. Uh, you were phenomenal in that. I saw you in Handmaid's Tales. Everyone else did. <laughs> 
You have this. Um, what has it been like for you this year? You've been a part of such incredible projects and so well deserved. Oh, thank you very much. Um, it's it's been really cool, honestly. I've been I've been in this business for for a while and <laughs> many years. Um, so it hasn't always been like this. Uh, you know, I've I've worked hard and um, definitely had moments where I really wish I had a job. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to have work to do and work to talk about that I'm really proud of, honestly. And such incredible characters. You can't always stumble upon characters like these, the ones you've played. Yeah, and that's honestly, it's a, that's a testament to what's happening right now, and I think in, in our industry. I think that, and, and there needs to be, definitely be more of it, but I think that the people who hold the purse strings are finally waking up to the fact that these are the stories that we want to see. We want to see stories about women. We want to see stories about diversity. We want to see we want to see ourselves. And I think that that's um, you know it's not me that's doing that. It's I, it's these writers that are finally able to tell their stories. And Gwendolyn, of course, uh, plays Brienne of Tarth on a little show called Game of Thrones, which just wrapped up. <laughs> Another great season for Brienne. Uh, a lot of Tormund talk. Um, and then, of course, in this show, you, you put on a helmet, and it really reminded me of Captain Phasma. Um, another well, a great year for you, too, Gwendolyn. <laughs> I, I've been enormously, enormously lucky. Uh, but, you know, the, the thing is, is that it, it's, it's really incredible to be a part of the sort of projects I'm, I'm a part of. But they are so few and far between. And my, my real hope is that this, the sort of work that we're here representing today breeds more of it, more, more interesting work. And things really don't have to make money. I don't find that the most interesting way to live. Um, it's, you know, obviously it's great that they do. We all have to survive. But I just would like to see, wouldn't you all just like to see something a bit different, new? Well, you don't feel like it, you're being prescribed a sort of archetype that you are supposed to be, supposed to be reflective of you. I just would like to see our humanity really reflected in our storytelling. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. And Alice, what's next for you? We saw you in Beautiful Creatures. You were so great in this. What are some roles or projects that you hope to pursue in the future? Well, I'm doing a, um, a film called, oh God, it's called um, Them That Follow. And I haven't really prepared, I've forgotten that, of course, you asked this question. Um, um, I'm, I also am a writer and director, so I've been, I'm also writing and finishing a second draft or something and got my short films and going to some festivals and stuff. Sorry, I'm being so nervous and weird. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that there was going to be all you guys, but it's cool. Like, I'm, it's nice. So. It's awesome. You are being so goddamn articulate. Like, I'm just loving it. Both of you. I'm running a temperature and I'm hallucinating, <laughs> so it's not going to last. It's not going to last. Well, I do want to open it up to some audience questions, so let's get it off. Here we go. Hello. Um, I was wondering from growing up, um, your experiences are of a story or a fun fact that help you play or relate to your characters. Um, growing up, I had a really big imagination and I always, uh, you know, as a lot of kids do, I was always pretending things, um, you know, but I always pretended like mine had were story related. So they were from like books and TV shows and stuff and movies <laughs> and there were costumes and it was very, it was really very serious and it wasn't like a game. Um, and I feel like honestly, I just started to get paid for it and that's what it is. so I feel like I took that into my work I, I, all the time I take it into my work all the time you know into every character just that it's all just imagination really but you oh god is it me <laughs> okay I mean I don't I, I'm torn here I'm torn between like telling a story about glove puppets which I'm not sure has any relevance to your question yes do you want to hear the glove puppets? Of course we do. Yeah. I don't know why I'm telling any of you this. <laughs> so I was really obsessed with glove puppets growing up. There was two British characters you won't even have heard of because they didn't even reach America called Roland Rat and Basil Brush. Do you know either of those? Yeah. 
I know this Ro guy I know, knows. I know Roland. Not, you know Roland? Well, I had a, I mean, look, it wasn't a sexual thing. I was a child, okay? But I had a strong attraction to these creatures that I couldn't understand how such enormous personality could come out of a glove puppet. And I kind of, I think I kind of thought, well, if a glove puppet can do it, Maybe I can too. I don't know what any of that means. And I'm not going to come back and think about this story. And I recommend none of you do too. Thank God for glove puppets. That's all I have to say. That's great. What about you, Alice? Oh, they're... Glove puppets? Um, I, what was the question? Are there fun, any fun facts or stories? My, the the character of Mary specifically, or just any any time. Oh man, yeah, I don't know. Like when I was a kid, I used to I like uh, and you know it is it's playful. It's about playing, and I would I really liked orchestrating like huge sort of melodramas as a child, where you know you'd have different um, wolf clans or. Um, <laughs> Pegasus or, you, you know, and there was, they would, the games would last for like a week, you know, weeks and weeks and, you know, lots of betrayals and coming together. And I always just thought that playing was actually a really kind of, definitely for me, like being, this industry is sort of like, it's so weird, but I think that its weirdness is kind of almost out in the open, you know, like you know, all of this right here, you know, that it's like, oh yeah, right. We all, we construct reality, you know, like something about um, being in this industry felt really um, actually honest to me. And I, I enjoyed kind of, you know, exploring and yeah. And I'm just trying to keep doing that. Storytelling. We all played Pegasus, right? In our yards? Come on, guys. Woo! I still have epic Game of Thrones adventures at home by myself. <laughs> Who's next? This question really is for everybody. And both of you, uh, Gwen and Elizabeth, have played really powerful women. Currently in your past series, obviously, in Mad Men and Game of Thrones, I tell my students all the time that women rule in both of those series, and they're the ones with the power. Do you think Hollywood is changing as far as giving women more roles like that and going that way in the future? Um, I think it's changing. I think there's still a lot of change to be had. Um, you know, it obviously, you look at things like uh, whether it's Wonder Woman, something sort of giant like that, or Star Wars and or Game of Thrones, or whether it's, you know, something like our project, Top of the Lake, led by, wim led by, by all women. Um, it's definitely changing, but that's, this is not the end of the story. I mean, there's so much work that's left to be done there that I think it, you know, we cannot give up that, that fight anytime soon. But it's, it's, you know, getting there, I guess, right? I agree. I think it's changing. Yeah. But what's important, I think, is to continue to promote that change. And due to the internet, we all have an equal, equal voice. And so we've entered a stage in our society whereby we're having to, we know the way things work. We, the things that people used to talk about in pubs or in their living rooms, they're saying, we can read them, they're written down and they take on a greater relevance because we see it in word form. That's just the way we operate as humans. So the world is having to listen to the true the true consciousness of humanity, really, of what people want. Now, the important thing is that that isn't denied or suppressed, but it's continued to be promoted. So what I want you to do is I want you to download this series multiple times. <laughs> legally, legally. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. But we need, to, we need to continue to push for different kinds of stories, I think. People want to see women in lead roles on screen, correct, guys? Yeah. We're all lead players in our own lives. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey! <laughs> she like creepy. <laughs> guys, this is Jane <laughs> Cannon, who wrote <laughs> Top of the Lake. <laughs> You're trying to stay hidden. I just got so excited about the conversation that you're having. I wanted to chip in. Yes. <laughs> do you want to sit? Ma'am, um, do, do you have a question? question? You know what I think is great about... No, I just want to say something. I love what you guys have said. But I, I think what's really important is that 
the shows that we do are really entertaining and that they're fucking good. That's the main thing, you know, like if they're good, it works. There's no other way around it. And I just think women are so funny and so amazing. I mean, some of our best comedians. <laughs> and I just love being with them. <laughs> And so it's not, you know, we're not trying to sell a difficult thing here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. fucking good, guys. It's, kind it's of really smart. good. Yeah. <laughs> well, Top of the Lake is out yeah. this weekend, correct? Uh, well, Do you want to promote your show here, Jane? <laughs> Come and promote. Sit. I've been, yes, I, can't I think so. <laughs> figure out how to put my legs on this, sir. So the show is out this weekend on Sundance TV, correct? The Sunday. Um, everybody better watch it. It has kick-ass women. Uh, Jane wrote it, and these three star in it, along with Nicole Kidman. You can't go wrong, so make sure to legally download it. (laughs) Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, guys.